Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Worship in God's House this morning. What a blessing to have you with us and a special welcome to all our guests today as well. Today I'm going to just announce a couple of things. Thank you to everybody who came to the chili cook-off on Friday night and gathered together for fellowship. Uh, those are opportunities for us to bond, to grow, to get to, one, get to know one another as well. Uh, and of course, this is the biggest blessing of all, when we get together together in God's house around word and sacrament too. So there's going to be another fellowship opportunity that's going to come up in February, February 17th, a Friday night. Uh, that will be a movie night here at Light of Life, and everybody is welcome to come to that. There will be popcorn, there will be snacks, you can bring your beverage, whatever you would like to drink. I'm sure there will be some beverages available for everybody else too. Uh, also, uh, an announcement about the ladies' aid. Uh, there will be uh, the ladies' meeting, uh, not on Tuesdays anymore, but on Saturdays, uh, beginning at 10 o'clock. And uh, every lady is welcome to come and join in the Bible study and the meeting at that time. Uh, also, at this time, I know it seems like we're planning way ahead in some respects, but we need to do that as far as Easter for kids. We had uh, Christmas for kids, a one-day vacation Bible school for Christmas for the kids back in December. We're planning for March 25th for Easter for kids. If there's any way you can help us, whether, whether it's gathering supplies or helping to teach, helping to guide the children around the rooms, or just preparing for the day, getting the schedule ready, that would be uh, greatly appreciated. Think about how you might be able to help out with that special outreach. Uh, we had some new families and young guests who joined us for the Christmas for Kids, so we're looking forward to the Easter for Kids coming up too and sharing the story of Jesus' resurrection. And then along those same lines too, uh, just so that you're kind of planning ahead too, we hope that you can join us for Ash Wednesday services. That's about a month away now, February 22nd is going to be Ash Wednesday services uh, and then the Lenten services that follow after that. There'll be more to say about that in the weeks to come. I believe that's all the announcements I have this morning. Um, so we'll begin our worship today. Uh, we are in the season of Epiphany. You can see before you the theme for this time of year, Jesus appears. We saw Jesus appearing last week as the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world Jesus appears for us today as the bright light, the great light that shines in the darkness. God bless our worship this morning as we begin with the first hymn.
of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just, and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Let us confess our sins to the Lord. Holy God, gracious Father, I am sinful by nature and have sinned against you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have not loved you with my whole heart. I have not loved others as I should. I deserve your punishment both now and forever. But Jesus, my Savior, paid for my sins with his innocent suffering and death. Trusting in him, I pray, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. <clears throat> Our gracious Father in heaven has been merciful to us. He sent his only son, Jesus Christ, who gave his life as the atoning sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. peace from above and for salvation let us pray to the Lord, Lord have mercy. for the peace of the whole world for the well-being of the church of God and for the unity of all let us pray to the And for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you sent your Son to proclaim your kingdom and teach with authority. Anoint us with the power of your Spirit that we too may bring good news to the afflicted, bind up the brokenhearted, and proclaim liberty to the captive. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Our first reading this morning comes from the prophet Isaiah, writing in chapters 8 and 9. Isaiah foretells that those people walking in darkness will see a great light. This will also serve as the sermon text for this morning. When someone tells you to consult mediums and spiritists who whisper and mutter, should not a people inquire of their God? Why consult the dead on behalf of the living? Consult God's instruction and the testimony of warning. If anyone does not speak according to this word, they have no light of dawn. Distressed and hungry, they will roam through the land. When they are famished, they will become enraged, and looking upward will curse their king and their God. Then they will look toward the earth and see only distress and darkness and fearful gloom, and they will be thrust into utter darkness. Nevertheless, there will be no more gloom for those who were in distress. In the past, he humbled the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, but in the future he will honor Galilee of the nations by the way of the sea beyond the Jordan. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest, as warriors rejoice when dividing the plunder. For as in the day of Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke that burdens them, the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. We invite you to join in singing Psalm 27D with the words of the song entitled, We Are Singing. Yes, this is the thing we 
light by living in love for God and for neighbor. From 1 John chapter 2 beginning with verse 3. We know that we have come to know him if we keep his commands. Whoever says, I know him, but does not do what he commands is a liar, and the truth is not in that person. But if anyone obeys his word, Love for God is truly made complete in them. This is how we know we are in him. Whoever claims to live in him must live as Jesus did. Dear friends, I am not writing you a new command, but an old one, which you have had since the beginning. This old command is the message you have heard, yet I am writing you a new command. Its truth is seen in him and in you, because the darkness is passing and the true light is already shining. Anyone who claims to be in the light but hates a brother or sister is still in the darkness. Anyone who loves their brother and sister lives in the light and there is nothing in them to make them stumble. But anyone who hates a brother or sister is in the darkness and walks around in the darkness they do not know where they are going because the darkness has blinded them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We invite you to please stand. light 
shined in the darkness, Jesus Christ, our Savior, from Matthew chapter 4. When Jesus heard that John had been put in prison, he withdrew to Galilee. Leaving Nazareth, he went and lived in Capernaum, which was by the lake in the area of Zebulun and Naphtali, to fulfill what was said through the prophet Isaiah. Land of Zebulun and land of Naphtali, the way of the sea beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people living in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. From that time on, Jesus began to preach, repent for the kingdom of heaven has come near. As Jesus was walking beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon called Peter and his brother Andrew. They were casting a net into the lake for they were fishermen. Come follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people. At once they left their nets and followed him. Going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They were in a boat with their father Zebedee, preparing their nets. Jesus called them, and immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. Jesus went throughout Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and sickness among the people. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. You may be seated for the next hymn, O Christ, our true and only light. and peace are yours from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. As we ponder God's word this morning, we turn to the words of the prophet Isaiah as he wrote in chapters 8 and 9 in our first lesson this morning. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. 
Dear brothers and sisters in our Lord Jesus Christ, I've made many trips in my life, probably you have too, some long distance trips. One thing that often happens with the long distance trips is that I start in the darkness. And when I start early in the morning in the dark, I long for the light of the dawn. I never know when a deer is gonna pop up or something else might pop up on the road, and that makes me a bit fearful. But when the dawn comes and the sun rises, now I can see what was in the darkness prior. The light is glorious. The sunlight helps and guides us in our travels. Your life is like a journey. You are on a trip right now. And by God's grace, you are not lost in darkness as you travel further and further into your future. For a light has dawned for you. That light is Christ Jesus, your Savior, to enlighten you and to give light upon your path as you journey throughout your life towards that brilliant light of your heavenly home, that light where the Lamb is its lamp, where there is no need for moon or sun ever again in that heavenly glory. Oh, there's a lot of people though, a lot of people who are still living in gloom and darkness as they travel along. Isaiah mentions that some of these people want to know their future too but they're looking in all the wrong places to know about their future. He talks about mediums and spiritists, these mediums and spiritists who mutter and chirp and twitter away. They make strange noises at times. They have a strange message. They try and convince people that they know the person's future. And today, people are tempted, maybe we are even tempted, to look to other sources so that we can be assured of our future, too. Maybe we have been tempted to look at horoscopes, or maybe to a spiritist, or maybe even to try and talk to a dead relative. People do those things. But Isaiah asks a very good question. Why consult the dead among the living? Where does Isaiah say we are to turn as we travel down that road of life? Not to those who consult the dead, but rather to the word of God, which is our light. He says, turn to the word, turn to the Bible, turn to God's word, which is always sure. We do not know what tomorrow may bring but we know that our future is certain in Christ Jesus. All those who attempt to figure out their future based upon human confidants, human people, people who want to tell us a message, they're lost in gloom, they're staggering around, just like when we are in the darkness, staggering around trying to find our way. And when they turn to human helpers, their soul grows hungrier and hungrier as they resist God's word and as they refuse to turn to that sure and certain light of God's word, God can then take that word away from them as they continue to just walk about in the darkness. But for you and for me, a new light has dawned. It is a great light. A people walking in darkness have seen a great light. This light, as Isaiah tells us, came to the land of Galilee. You've heard of the Sea of Galilee, haven't you, in, in Israel. Galilee was a region that was humbled time and time again in ancient Old Testament history. It was lost in darkness so often as terrible enemies like the Assyrians and the Babylonians would come in and trample the land, take the people captive. It was terrible times because God was also judging the people for their waywardness. They turned away from God and turned to these 
chirping and muttering spirits rather than turning to God's sure word. God brought his judgment upon the people. But Isaiah's message is not one just of judgment. It is one that reveals a great light. On that humbled land of Galilee would come that great light. That great light would walk in that land. We heard about it in the Gospel of Matthew today. That great light is Jesus Christ. He is the light of the world. He came not only to heal people, he came not only to raise the dead, he came to proclaim that saving message, that same word that Isaiah pointed people to. And time and time again, that's where we go as well. We turn to that one who once roamed about in Galilee, preaching the good news that is the light of the world. Jesus came to gladden us with his gifts. Jesus came to free us with his sacrifice. Dear friends, don't look for light, eternal light, in worldly objects, in people who promote a muttering message. Look to the light that is everlasting, the light that brings you true peace, true joy, even in the midst of the darkness. That light convinces us of the truth of God's word, the truth that never fails us. But that light that continues to shine is also a light that continues to spread. Isaiah says this in verse 3, you have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. God's nation of people wasn't meant for just those of Jewish heritage in a small little country in the Middle East. God's nation was to be enlarged. Now, at Isaiah's time, it didn't look like it was going to be enlarged. It was shrinking as people were taken off into exile, as they were brought captive in strange lands. But God said a remnant would remain, a remnant that would remain faithful to the Lord. And from that remnant, would come an entire nation of people of every race, tribe, and language. Whenever you go and read scripture, I would invite you to look at the book of Acts again. It's the accounts, it's the history of the early New Testament Christian church. And you hear about a man named Paul. Paul made several journeys, and with each journey to spread the gospel, his scope got wider and wider and wider. He reached more and more people. He reached them with the glorious light of the gospel. That light spread throughout lands filled with darkness. And oh, what a gracious spread that was. Those people lost in darkness did not deserve the light that came to them. It was all grace. Just like when God sends his grace upon the harvest, as Isaiah says. He sends his rain and sun upon that harvest. And when the harvest comes, people are filled with joy. That's the same kind of joy that we have. It's the same kind of joy that we often see when someone who has been away from the word or was ignorant of the word now comes to faith. They express that joy with thanksgiving in their lives, and they want to share that joy. One of the amazing things I've often seen are new members to our church, and it's like they cannot keep the message to themselves. They want to share that message with others as well. May the light of Christ's joy continue to fill our hearts and give us that eager zeal to want to share that message with others as well. But what do we see in our world today? We may look about us and say, boy, things look pretty gloomy. 
You may not be one for statistics, and that's okay. Some of those statistics were shared at the leadership conference held in Chicago this last week where 1,300 fellow people of our synod joined together. Statistics tell us that our church body is shrinking and the church bodies of many Christian congregations are shrinking as well. And so what are we to do? Are we to throw up our hands in despair? To look at those gloomy statistics and only concentrate on them and say, oh well, I guess that's the way of the church. Jesus comes to us again and says, the people walking in darkness have seen a great light. You know, that little message I just shared about the conference, that wasn't the overarching message by any means. The overarching message was this. We live in challenging times, but oh, how God is granting us so many opportunities to reach out and share with people who are lost and staggering, who are confounded by what they're living in, by all the difficulties that they're going through. There are so many people who are lost in immorality, adultery, all kinds of other problems in their life. Look at the drug abuse that is going on as well. So many of our young people, even in our own community, are lost, looking for hope in the great darkness of drug abuse. What light can we give to those around us? Ponder, please. Ponder those people in our world today Ponder those people for whom Christ Jesus died. Jesus faced the great darkness of Good Friday so that the light of the gospel, the light of forgiveness and grace would shine forth. And therefore, not only in Scripture does Jesus say, He is the light of the world, Jesus turns right around and says, You are the light of the world. You have that message. Jesus entrusts us with that message. The mission of the church continues to spread by God's grace. When a heart is converted to Jesus, it is all by his power through his word, but he uses you as an instrument. How humbling that is to think that I am the light of the world. You are the light of the world. Share that light, dear friends, for Christ Jesus has come to take away your sins and you have a message to proclaim to that other person, to that neighbor, to that friend in order to lift away the burden of sin from their shoulders, to give them a light as they go forth in their life, a joy that is everlasting, a joy that comes from Christ Jesus. As you look at these words, as Isaiah proclaims them today about this light that has come, you may find it very interesting that right after the words that were read this morning in the first reading comes a declaration and a proclamation of that very light. You know what the words are right after our text? To us, a child is born. To us, a son is given. Isaiah proclaims exactly what that light is. There is no need for doubt. There is no need for despair. The word of God, the unchanging light of God's word has been revealed to us. And that light is Christ Jesus. Jesus is the light that has pierced the darkness. He has pierced the darkness for you and for me. Let us go forth and live in that light. Live in that light as John told us in the second reading for today. Living in that light means not living in hatred and animosity toward our neighbor, not holding grudges, but rather loving as Christ loved us.
May the light of Jesus Christ continue to go forth and go forth boldly with all the opportunities that Christ lays before us so that the dawn of a new day, the dawn of the gospel may go forth until Jesus Christ comes back in all his glory on the last day to take us to that light of heavenly glory which he has won for us by his grace. To him be glory now and forever. Amen. Now the peace of God which surpasses all understanding keep your hearts and your minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. We invite you to please stand as we join in the confession of our Christian faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. We join in the responsive prayer of the church. Eternal God, when you finished creating the universe and everything in it, you formed a man from the dust of the ground. You breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and he became a living being. From his own flesh and bones, you created a fitting helper for him, and together Adam and Eve passed life on to countless human beings across the course of time. Move us to marvel each day at the bodies you create. The fall into sin destroyed the perfection of Eden, and life became a challenge from birth to death. Because of sin, our bodies experience fatigue and pain, disease and injury, and the weakness of aging. We are often the victims of the sins of others, and sometimes, sadly, we cause others to endure discomfort and distress. Help us to cope with the sad certainty that sin harms the bodies you create. Strengthen our faith so that we manage our own lives wisely and carefully. Help us overcome habits that harm our bodies Lead us to be cautious and keep us from taking unnecessary risks. Provide medical personnel and medicines that foster good health. Give us wisdom to use the help that you provide. Forgive us for the times when our actions or our failure to act have brought pain to others. Guide us to value all life and keep us from hurting or harming any of your creatures. Give us courage to defend those who are bullied by words or actions. Provide compassion to those who are wounded in body or mind. Make us the kind of people others can trust and in whom they can find support. In your wisdom, use us to care for the sick, the depressed, the young, and the aging. Lead us to pray always and to help when we can. We ask that you keep in your loving care Billy Shirley, our sister in Christ, who continues her recovery from her fall. Be her strength and guide in the moments of her loneliness. We pray for Ann Metz, the mother of Pamela Molinari, who was recently hospitalized in New Albany. We pray that you would grant grace and recovery to Anne according to your will. 
be her rock and refuge in every time of need. We thank you for the recovery you have given to Nancy McCauley. We pray that you would bless our sister in Christ with your great love and compassion. Continue to guide her with help and hope. We pray for Peggy Fisk and her mother, Margaret Lepp. We pray for Margaret, who was admitted to the hospital with pneumonia and flu and is in serious condition. We pray that you would grant Mother Margaret the grace to persevere in her time of need and grant patience and help to Peggy as she continues to watch over her mother. Grant relief according to your will, O great physician. We pray for the family of Bonnie Terhoon, whom you have taken home to eternal rest to be with you forever. We grant, we ask that you would grant grace to her family, to Missy, her daughter, to Scott, her son-in-law. Continue to bless them with the good news of the resurrection to eternal life and the sure hope of their great reunion in heaven, where we will live with you forever. We pray for Jacqueline Copenhaver, diagnosed with Lyme disease. We ask that you would continue to uplift and strengthen her in her time of need. We also pray for the members of St. Matthew's Lutheran Church who will be closing their doors after 105 years of existence in Benton Harbor. Grant grace and mercy to the members, to the sheep of St. Matthew's, that they may still find refuge in your word and sacraments in these changing times. Bless their pastor and bless their outreach efforts into the community at Benton Harbor. Lord, hear us as we bring you our private petitions. We implore you, Lord, to extend your love and power, especially to children who cannot defend themselves. Spare them from being abused and abandoned. Provide safety and security. Lead people everywhere to value and protect the lives of the unborn whom you have created. Let the light of faith move many more to seek an end to the tragedy of abortion. Eternal Father, sustain and protect the life of all people and provide a time of grace so they may learn to love the blessings of life with you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Lord, we give thee but thine own, whatever the gift may be. All that we have is yours alone, a trust, O Lord, from thee. Amen.
At this time, we will take a moment to welcome our newest members to our congregation, Jim and Nancy McCauley. Dear friends in Christ, St. Paul described the unity that exists in Christ's church when he wrote, there is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. With sincere joy, we welcome you to the fellowship of our congregation. As you know, believers in Christ regularly gather around his word and sacraments, encourage one another in faith and life, and carry out the work of his kingdom. The scriptures encourage us, each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. I ask you, is it your desire to join us in worship and mission and support this work with your prayers and gifts? If so, then answer, it is, and I ask God to help me. It is. Dear brothers and sisters, as we welcome these new members to our Christian family, I encourage you in the name of Jesus to keep them in your minds, hold them in your hearts, and pray for them again and again. Show them the face of friendship and offer them a hand of support. Encourage them with your works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. The peace of Christ be with us all. Amen. And we'll say a brief prayer. Gracious Father, we thank you for leading Jim and Nancy to desire to become members of our congregation Guide us with your wisdom as we worship and work together. Mold our minds and hearts into a single Christ-like will so that we may be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, and faithful in prayer. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Blessed Lord, you have given us your holy scriptures for our learning. May we so hear them, read, learn, and take them to heart, that being strengthened and comforted by your holy word, we may cling to the blessed hope of everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We join to sing the final hymn. Mm -hmm. 